Hi everyone, this is Garrison for Iron Kingdoms at War, and I'm here to make a video about basing a miniature with some foliage made from blister foam. Now, there's all sorts of ways you can do green foliage on bases. You know, you can do your traditional static grass. You know, so for example, on this Kara Sloan figure, I've got some static grass there. You can do um, tufts of grass which are made by like Silphor, um, the Army Painter has some different versions of it. You just stick these tufts of grass on. And as much as I like those, um, the thing I've run into is I want something that looks like mossy undergrowth but not grass. And I found a great tutorial on MassiveVoodoo.com, which is a site I highly recommend to anyone who does miniature painting, modeling, sculpting, etc. And um, I discovered a way to make shallow foliage on that site from blister foam. So you get an effect that looks something like this here. So you get these bits made of foam that become a shallow grass or moss, you know, whatever you want it to be. But something that doesn't have that staticky grass look to it, which I'm not always thrilled with. You know, it, it works well in some miniatures and in some themes, and it doesn't work well in others. This, this tends to look really nice in just about any base, this uh, blister foam. So, um, you know, as you know, with miniatures bases, there's all sorts of fun things you can do. You can do your cork basing, which is very popular, such as this um, alternate model, Alt Nashley figure. It's actually Seth Alcott from the Iron Kingdom's range. You can, yeah, I used modeling clay to make this base, um, this ice base, and some water effects from my Kador Manhunter. Um, I made for my Kador Commandos some custom bases with uh, green stuff, sandbags, balsa wood, some styrene girders, you know, bits like an old gun from um, another unit to, to make my destroyed trench base. But what we're going to talk about now is this, this foam shallow foliage. It's really simple. All you're really going to need besides paint is a piece of blister foam. And when I say blister foam, we're talking about the stuff that, you know, comes, let me zoom out here a little bit, of course, that comes in a, you know, privateer pack, press blister package. So that's the foam we're talking about. And some super glue. The brand doesn't matter. You know, I like Loctite. You know, a lot of people like Gorilla Glue, Zap Gap, whatever. Um, whatever your preference is for glue, that's fine. It'll work. What I, you don't want to do is substitute something else. You don't want to try to use white glue like Elmer's or Weld Bond um, or hot glue or something like that. You really want to use super glue because it has the kind of bond we're going to need very particular to this project. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my blister foam. I'm just going to tear it into some little pieces, and I won't need many. I mean, I'm going to tear way more off than I need. All right, but I just need to tear off some little chunks, okay, of this blister packaging. Actually, I'm make these even a little smaller, make it a little easier to work with later on. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to look at my figure and decide what I want to do with his base, where I want this foliage to be. Now on the back of this figure, I've got some brick um, pattern scribed in, and I can show you how to do that if you ever want me to. Um, any of these other bases you've seen besides the foliage, let me know um, in the comment section of this website, and I'll be sure to do a tutorial on anything else you see. Um, so I want this to be like a decaying road that's been overgrown by dirt and moss, and so that's why the back of the base looks like this. But on the front, I need that green moss. So here's how we're going to do it. We're going to take a little bit of our super glue, okay, and I'm just going to apply a couple, where I want this, I'm going to put a couple patches of glue. Now this figure is already painted, his base is obviously already painted, and um, he's also finished in terms of a dull coat put over him, so that's all done. I'm going to take a couple pieces of my foam, and I'm going to press them onto those dabs of glue. So right now this looks hideous and you think I've screwed up my miniature, you're going to see that's not what's going to happen. So, um, I've got the foam on there. Now I really want to make sure that it has a really good bond. So you could take the back of a, a paintbrush, just push down, make sure that foam is really sticking hard Okay, to that uh, where you put the glue. You could take the back of an X-Acto knife, you know, press it in there, be careful not to chip your miniature, right? And you could certainly do this to a base before you pin a miniature on, you know, finish the base and then add the miniature later, but I like to do it this way. So that's really on there good. That's not going anywhere. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this dry, 
which won't take long because it is super glue. Um, but I want to make sure it's extra dry because that glue will stay a little wet in that foam and I don't want to go over that with a paintbrush and try to paint in that and wreck a paintbrush until I know that glue's actually dry. So I'm going to wait about an hour, probably longer than you have to. And I'm going to come back and show you the next step. So we'll take it from there in just a little while. Hang on for a second. Okay, so now it's been a while and my foam has significantly dried in, in terms of the pieces that I glued to the base. So what you're going to need now is a pair of tweezers, which I guess I should have said earlier, but hopefully you watch this whole video through before you try anything anyway. Uh, so you're going to need your tweezers, and you're going to pick these off. Right now, what's going to happen is something unpredictable. I can't entirely manage the, the amount of material that stays on the base when I first pluck this off, um, but that random appearance is what is going to make it look natural. So that's the beautiful thing about it. So what I'm going to do is grab pieces of this foam with my tweezers or you know if you have forceps or whatever that's fine. I'm trying to avoid any painted parts of the miniature as best I can as I pull this off because even though I have sealed this miniature I really don't want to chip the paint and have to go back and touch it up. So you'll see I'm pulling bits and pieces of this off I'm going to continue to do that. I don't want a lot left. I want just a hint of this foam left on the base. And by gradually plucking it off, looks like I've got a stubborn piece in there, okay. And taking care of business here. So you can see that I'm whittling it down to a shallow patch. All right, when you think about those big chunks of foam that I have on there, that's still too much. All right, so I need to get whittle that down a little bit more. It's going to look oddly bushy. So I just continue to go into the miniature and whittle that down. Again, I don't want much left on there at all. And I want it very shallow. I don't want a lot hanging over the edge of the base, although I like when a little bit of the base material hangs over the edge. Gives it a more natural look. Alright, so little blow to get rid of the foliage, any pieces on that are left in there. And hopefully you can see, let's do a little zoom in there. Hopefully you can see, it's a little bit too zoomed in. And what we've got there is these couple of nice little mossy patches. So let's talk about paint, which is the next step. That's basically done, except for the painting. So for the painting, I'm going to mix a uh, green ink, in privateer press green ink and some black ink. I'm going to do the, my paint mixing off screen, but um, I'm going to mix those two inks. Now the green ink is okay, but it's not quite the green I'm looking for. It's kind of a blue green. That's why I'm mixing a little black ink into this. Okay, and. It's a pretty dark ink. I'm going to add a little water. Again, I know you can't see my paint mixing off screen. I'm going to add a little water to this because I want it kind of. I want the so the foam to absorb it. All right. And now this is going to be a very dark shade of green. In fact, let me show you right here. That's pretty dark. Oh, couldn't see that. That's a pretty dark patch of green um, because this is going to be the the under part. I'm going to dry brush this with some lighter shades to give this foam foliage depth. But I'm going to start with this dark green. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some on my brush. This is an old nasty brush. It's not one of my nice Windsor Newtons or whatever. Don't really have to worry about it. I'm going to really dab it in. I'm not so much painting as letting the foam absorb the paint. Alright, so I'm going in there on these patches 
and I'm laying the foam. I'm trying not to get it on the other parts of the base, the, the dirt textured part of the base, because again, this model really is finished. I can go back and touch it up if that happens, but why not be careful and do this once? All right, so I'm going to go in, and again, I'm letting this foam absorb the paint okay, as best I can. All right. Now I'm going to finish up this first base coat off screen um, and then I'm going to come back and talk about dry brushing in just a second.